Hi, uh, today we're going to talk about trade, international trade. Um, in the first discussion section, if you remember, we talked about comparative advantage and absolute advantage, and we, we claimed that, and we also effectively showed that two producers would actually engage in trade whenever there's some comparative advantage if the producers are, have comparative advantage. But absolute advantage doesn't have any role to play in, uh, in ensuring a trade. So now we are, we are actually taking their argument to international trade, we're going to apply that on international trade. First of all, I'm not really going to talk about comparative advantage and absolute advantage in this class. If you, if you want to refer to that, you have to go back to your first discussion section, uh, which is available on iLearn on your course page. So the first question is why do we actually engage in international trade? The answer is because it results in surplus, okay? If you can try to relate it to our first discussion section, uh, we talked about that there is some gain when you engage in trade, so it's exactly the same here. If you engage in international trade, then you can, res you can have some uh, surplus, or you can have some gain. So gain is the same as surplus here. So the surplus can be a surplus to the consumer, okay? It can, it can be a gain to the consumer surplus, or it can be a gain to the producer surplus. And we are not going to differentiate between consumer surplus and producer surplus here. All that we care is if there is any sort of gain to the total surplus. The total surplus is a summation of consumer surplus and producer surplus. So it might happen that after you engage in trade, the consumer surplus is going down, but the producer surplus is going up. But at the end of the day, the total surplus has actually increased. Okay, that could be one, one, one scenario. So in the first case, consumer surplus went down, producer surplus went up. In the second scenario, it could happen that the consumer surplus is actually going up, but the producer surplus is going down. But when you take, when you take both of them into account, you'd see that total surplus has actually increased. So it doesn't matter who is gaining or who is losing. All that matters is if there is any gain in the total surplus at the end of the day. And that's exactly why we engage in trade. So in, these today's, in today's discussion, we're going to talk about uh, export and import. We're going to see the effect of export and import on trade. We, also going, we are also going to see the uh, impact of tariff, which is a sort of tax, tax on import, the import, import of, uh, sorry, the, uh, the impact of tariff on, 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 on our surplus. So we will start with the impact of export. Uh, so the first case is export, that's what we are going to see. What we're going to see here is that uh, after our analysis, export, if we engage in export, then we, it will actually result in an increase in the total surplus. Okay? So to do this analysis, we have to go back to our usual, uh, usual supply and demand curve analysis. So the vertical axis, we have price. Uh, on the consumer, oh, sorry, on the vertical axis, okay, let me try it a little bigger. We have quantity here. So now the supply curve, the, the demand curve that we have here is the domestic demand curve. Okay? And the supply curve that we have here, so this was a demand curve, this is a domestic demand curve, this is this is a domestic supply curve. So what do we mean by domestic demand curve? It basically this domestic demand curve actually gives you the de demand of the domestic uh, domestic domestic customers. So Whoever, whoever is a U.S. resident belongs to this dom domestic customer group. So this demand curve does not show any sort of demand of the international, of the foreigners or of the international customers. And the domestic supply curve, it's actually the supply curve of the domestic producers. Okay? So the demand curve is the domestic demand curve, it's the demand curve of the domestic consumers. This one is the domestic supply curve, which is the supply curve of the domestic producers. And as we know that the intersection of the demand curve and supply curve gives us the equilibrium. So from the vertical axis, we have the equilibrium price, which we denote as PA. And from the horizontal axis, we find the equilibrium quantity, which we call QA. You might be wondering what A, what A is. What does A denote? Basically, A means order key. OK, A. Let me just write it here. I'll remove it, though. So, order key. A U T A R K Y. It it just means that absence of trade. Okay. So if we don't engage in any sort of trade, that scenario is what we call the key. Okay. So 
In this particular case, you are not engaging in any sort of international trade. Okay? If there is no international trade, then that's what we call autarky. So this is the autarky price, this is autarky quantity. This is all before you, you engage in export. Okay? Now, now suppose that uh, you are an exporter you, and you export airplanes and maybe you, you want to export airplanes to, uh, to Belgium. The question is when, when do you actually want to export planes to Belgium? You want to export planes to Belgium only when you think that it's profitable to do so. So what happens is you can buy, you can buy from the domestic market uh, airplane, an airplane at a price of PA Okay, so you, from the, you go to the domestic producers and from them you buy an airplane at a price of PA and then you go and sell it to Belgium at a higher price, maybe at PW, this is a higher price. W stands for uh, world, so PW is basically world price, okay, so PA was autarky price, PW is the world price. Alright, so you can see that PW is higher than PA, so you are buying the airplane from the domestic producer at a price of PA, but you're selling at a price of PW, so you're actually charging a higher price to, to, to the Belgium company, okay, to whom you're selling the airplane. That means you're actually making a profit by exporting an airplane. Now the thing is, uh, when you find it profitable, profitable to export airplanes, so you start buying more airplanes from the domestic producers and you start exporting more airplanes to Belgium. Okay, so if th that is happening in the economy, what happens in the domestic market? You're actually increasing, increasing the, uh, the demand pressure in the domestic market. So when the demand is increasing in the market, you know the price should actually go up in the domestic market as well. So the price will keep going up from PA to PW in the domestic market. Again, the domestic market, the price before trade was PA, but as you started exporting and you, f you kept finding it uh, more profitable to export more airplanes to Belgium, you, start, you kept buying more airplanes from the domestic producers, so the, the demand in the market increased, the demand for airplanes in the domestic market increased. As a result, the price also increased, the price of airplane increased. And it will keep increasing until it reaches, until it reaches the world price. So the world price now becomes the new domestic price. Okay, so initially the domestic price was PA, but after the increase, after the trade, the price, domestic price increases from PA to PW, that's the world price. The price that you are charging, uh, that you are charging the Belgium company or whoever you're selling it to, uh, to, to in Belgium. So if we draw a price line here, okay, before we draw a price line, let me, let me just remind you, uh, before the trade, before any sort of trade, before we engaged in any, engaged in any sort of international trade, the consumer surplus was given by this big triangle here. Okay, and you you should uh, you should you should know this really well now. Which one is consumer surplus? So this is consumer surplus, and this is the producer surplus. This lower triangle. This is a producer surplus. Okay, that's before the trade, before the export. Now, if we draw the new price line, PW. So we are drawing a new price line PW. Uh, the new price line PW it intersects it intersects the demand curve at this particular point. So if we draw a projection from there onto the horizontal axis, the point that we find here is Q QD QD quantity demanded. And if we project it from the supply curve, we find QS. This point is QS. So you can see that when the price in the domestic market is PW, the quantity supplied is QS and the quantity demanded is QD and it's obvious from here the quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded at this particular price PW. Okay, So there is actually a mismatch between quantity demanded and quantity supplied in the domestic market and we, we, we claim that we, we call this excess supply. Okay, So this portion is excess supply. Alright, so excess supply is nothing but the difference between, let me write somewhere here, let me just erase this quickly, and uh, the excess supply, excess supply equals QS 
minus QD. So your quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded. And the interesting thing is, the excess supply is nothing but the amount of export you're making, okay? So after meeting the, after meeting the domestic demand, quantity demand, after do, meeting the domestic demand, or QD, the excess supply that's that is remaining in the economy, you export it to Belgium. So excess supply is equal to export. So if in the exam you're asked to find uh, find the total total amount of export, all that you have to do is just take the difference between QS and QD. That is just find the excess supply. If you can find the excess supply, that that's what we that's what we're actually interested in. That's a value of ex that's a quantity of export. Okay. Uh, okay. Now what we're gonna try to do is. Okay, let me quickly erase this portion because I'm going to need a little more free space. Sorry, I have a small board here. Okay, let's, let's, let's label these small regions here. Uh, here, it's region 1. It's, let's, sorry, let's call this one region A. This is region B. This is region C. This is region D. This one is A. This one is F. So, uh, the consumer surplus before the trade if we denote it by CS1, consumer surplus before trade, was given by the upper triangle here, this upper triangle here, this B upper triangle, okay? So that's actually A plus B plus C, A plus B plus C, that's consumer surplus before the trade. Uh, now, uh, what was the producer surplus before trade? It's it's the area between the price line, the axis, and the vertical axis, and also uh, the supply curve. So, so uh, basically, it's the area here, this lower triangle. We already talked about it. So, PS1 is basically the area given by E and F. PS1 equals E plus F. Okay, so that's a producer surplus so before trade. All these things are before trade. Let me just write here before trade. Trade. Okay, uh, what happens after trade? So after trade, after trade, the price line jumps up from here to here. This is a new price line. Okay. So again, consumer surplus is given by the area between the excess, the price line, the price line, and the demand curve. So the consumer surplus is actually shrinking from this big triangle to this small triangle here. Okay, so consumer surplus is shrinking from this big triangle to this small triangle. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's 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 find out the new consumer surplus now, which is which is CS two. CS two, the new consumer surplus after the trade after the export. It's given by the small region A. So let's write A here. What about the producer surplus now? Uh, the producer surplus now is given by is given by uh, the new price is given by the area between the new price line, the vertical axis, and the supply curve. So again, it's given by the vertical sorry the, uh, yeah the vertical axis, the new price line, and the portion of the supply curve. So this area, this big triangle, which is B plus C plus D plus E plus F. Let's write it down here. B plus C plus D plus E plus F. That's the new producer surplus. Okay, uh, let's try to see if there has been any gain in consumer surplus, okay? So let's try to calculate the change in consumer surplus. Delta sign here, it, it denotes a change in consumer surplus, I mean a change. So a change in consumer surplus is nothing but CS2 equals, sorry, C, del CS equals CS2 minus CS1. So we are actually subtracting uh, CS1 from CS2. If you, if you do that, what we have is um, A minus A plus B plus C, right? So we are actually left with negative B plus C, okay? Negative B plus C. So what you see is that 
the consumer surplus, the change in consumer surplus is negative. That means the consumer surplus is actually uh, decreasing after the trade, after exporting. The consumer surplus is is uh, is decreasing. So we have a loss in consumer surplus after the trade. But what about the producer surplus? Let's cal try to calculate the change in producer surplus. So de delta again denotes change. So that change in producer surplus equals PS2 plus PS2 minus PS1. So if you subtract uh, PS1 from PS2, you should be left with uh, B plus C plus D, I guess. B plus C plus D. I'm not wrong. Yeah, B plus C plus D. That's the change in producer surplus. So what you see is that this is a positive number. It should be a, this is a, uh, this is a positive number. So producer surplus, the change in producer surplus is positive. That means producer surplus is increasing. So after you engaged in in, a, in this trade, after you uh, exported, what happened is the consumer surplus went down, but the producer surplus went up. Now we want to see the total effect, the total effect on surplus. The total effect on surplus. What, how, how, how can we see that? How can we calculate that? Let me erase the upper portion. Um, okay. Right. Uh, so the change in total surplus, delta TS, change in total surplus, TS stands for total surplus, equals delta CS plus delta PS. Okay, so change in consumer surplus plus change in producer surplus. So we have negative B plus C plus B plus C plus D. If we open the bracket, we have negative B, negative C plus B, plus C plus D, so B, B cancel out, C cancel out, we're left with D. Again, D is a positive number, it's greater than zero. So what can we conclude? We can conclude that the total surplus is actually increasing. So after you engage in exporting, after you engage in this sort of trade, the total surplus has actually increased, and that's what we claimed before this analysis, that when you when you engage in trade, you should, it should result in uh, it, should, it should result in an increase in, in increase in total surplus. So we, we we consider the particular case of export, and we saw that in case of export, definitely it increases the total surplus. Now we're going to talk about shortly uh, about the impact of imports on total surplus.